Good afternoon, Year 6. So here's my little video on how to make your own T-Rex sculpture. So you're going to need an empty milk bottle, which you've cleaned out and removed the label from too. You'll need scissors and masking tape, possibly glue and paint later on, depending on which resources you choose to use. Okay. So first of all, you need to take your empty bottle and you'll need to mark a line from the top, from the middle of the mouthpiece, to almost the end of the bottle but just leave a two inch gap so that you're going to have a hinge for the mouth okay so if you could make your line and cut across it on both sides of the bottle that's step one it's quite tricky to do this cutting so you may need to get a grown-up to have, ask you ask a grown-up for help actually the plastic can come quite sharp as well so you've done it um, across the middle of your bottle, both sides, and you'll see that it starts to move apart like this. And you've left two inches at the end, as we said before, so that you've got the hinge. Now, the next step is to cut the mouth piece of the bottle off as well. So again, you need to be careful, or it might be a good idea to get a grown up to help you actually surprisingly can be quite sharp. I think I need a grown-up to help me. <laughs> Just take your time. Remember we're going to be spontaneous, resilient learners. Take our time and choose our mater materials carefully. And enjoy what we do. Remove the one piece now. I'm going to remove the second piece as well. Okay, so you need to make sure that you put your lid and the mouthpiece, which you've cut off to one side. So the next step is you can see the bottle now slice through the middle where there's a hinge left. It's missing the mouthpiece, but we've put it to one side to use later. And now we're going to mark out an L shape around the handle and we're going to cut across the line and it's like an upside down L all the way around both sides. We're going to remove the handle at this point, but you do need to make sure you leave a layer of here because that's going to be the jawline the bottom jawline of our T-Rex. Um, interesting creature lived over 65 million years ago in the Crustaceous period in USA and Canada. Um, if you've got any more interesting facts about the T-Rex, please share with me. I'll be dropping in little bits, little nuggets that I know as we go. I'm gonna get on with cutting this out now, the owl shape. So just take your time. Okay, so we've cut the handle off the bottom and now we're going to put it on top at the back facing the opposite direction. This eventually will be the eyes of your T-Rex. You can see from my model here that his eyes are on the back of his head. Okay, now this part you might need a grown-up to actually help you. One person to keep it still and a second person to make sure that we're sticking it down. Um, as I said to you in the um, lesson introduction. You can experiment with different materials here. Find out if you think sellotape or masking tape works best. Um, I think masking tape is quite effective because it can go on and you can just slop it on in any which way. It'll make it secure. But also when you come to painting it later, it gives it a wrinkled event, effect. So it looks kind of reptilian like and you can see I can be a little bit slapdash with this as well. So it's good for those of us that are a bit more heavy handed, um, but it still be really effective as well. Um, okay. okay, so hopefully it's looking a bit like this now. Um, you've cut the handle off, removed it to the opposite side of your bottle, reversed it, turned it around and pushed it towards the back. Um, and that's your handle ready to be the eyes. So the next step then, and this refers to our learning objective today about different joins, is to make the snout of the, the dinosaur, the front of the T-Rex. Um, 
Tyrannosaurus, um, Tyrannosaurus rex is Latin for the tyrant lizard king as well. So that's quite a cool name, isn't it? But it's not surprising because he could run at 20 kilometers a mile, 20 kilometers an hour. So it would be no big deal for him to catch a human um, for his dinner. So let's get on with the joining of the snout now. So at the top, Obviously, you can see the bottom part of the bottle is loose. That's OK. We're going to fix that in a bit. Um, but for now, we're going to work on his nose. We need to cut about four slips, four little slips into the end of the bottle, the top part. And we're going to um, mould the front of the bottle together to make the shape. You might need a second pair of hands for this. So if there's somebody else around that can help you, I'm just going to play and experiment with it. Have your masking tape to hand so that you can stick the snouts together um, and join the bends together. It is really fiddly. It's gonna take some time and you might want to take the masking tape off and try a different look um, but this is part of our learning objective today remember we, we are thinking about how to improve all the time how we can join it up better how we can make it look neater more effective if we want a, a smaller snout to bunch it up a bit tighter or perhaps spread it out a bit if you want a bigger snout so i'm starting to just get the shape together now Okay, so hopefully now you've got the snouts, how you like it. Um, you've managed to play around with it a bit and just find the shape that you're happy with and secure it with the masking tape. So the next step then, remember I asked you to keep the mouth of the bottle. So either yours is still in one piece if you cut it neater than me or it's in two pieces. But either way, we're going to cut it again. So if you've got the mouth piece, very tiny, isn't it? You need to cut this in half now you'll have a obviously it'll be um, a bigger piece at the back where it was attached to the bottle and the smaller piece where you pull the milk out of the smaller half of this uh, semicircle is going to be the nostril and the larger half um, will be the eyelids okay sorry not quite see me cutting those out You've got to do that for both sides. Okay, so I'm not sure how well you can see that, children. Quite difficult, isn't it? But I've got the larger size um, part of the mouthpiece and I've sellotape. Matt, use the masking tape to attach it to the handle because that's going to be the eyelid for the dinosaur. Apologise about my nails. I wish I could have had a manicure before putting this together for you today. Um... I'm just now going to attach the other eyelid. Again, it's really about fiddling around with it. I want you to be really happy with your own design. And of course, it will add expression to your dinosaur as well. Um, when you add in the eyes, you know, do you want him to look ferocious? Maybe they're going to be more forward or maybe he's kind of cute. Or maybe he's a bit dopey looking and cross-eyed. So, you know, you want you might want to think about this when you're putting the eyes into place because you want the eyelids to be really well defined and stick out. And all the time, just think you could have just stuck this bottle in, in the recycling bin outside. But actually, rather than recycling, you're upcycling because you've taken something that we use every day and you're making something new and exciting from it. So then with the smaller part, of the mouthpiece. Can't really see, can you? I'm so sorry, children. There you go. Um, I'm going to stick it towards the front of my dinosaur now. Um, and these are going to be the nostrils. And of course, um, just all the time, it's adding texture, isn't it? We've been learning about texture with Miss Hollis, um, about giving our work a different effect or a different feel. So now I am sellotaping, you all masking taping, I keep mixing those two up, the nostril into place. And again, the, the angle will just build your T-Rex's character um, and they will all look different and unique. 
because of that. So, and you can have a play around. The great thing about masking tape is if you think, oh, that nostril's a bit higher than the other nostril, might take it off and just lower it down. Um, and so, yeah, I'm starting to see that it's taking shape. Okay, so these seriously big beasts, um, you know, they could grow to six meters tall and 12 meters long with their from there with their tail as well. Now, obviously I asked you to keep the lid at the bottle. So this now is going to be his big piercing blue eyes or green, if you've got the green or red lid. So you're going to cut this in half. Now this is really tricky and actually it's, it's quite um, tough to get through. So I suggest you do ask an adult to help you with this bit. Maybe little snips will help to break the plastic as you go through. Or sharper scissors. But remember what we're doing today, we're persevering. As if by magic there, I've changed the scissors. I did need um, some sharper scissors to get through this actually. Um, almost there now, just at the end. One last snip, okay, and there we go. So when one um, tool didn't work out, I had to try another one, I had to persevere and be resilient and resourceful. Okay, so we have the mouth of the bottle there making the eyelid and that's defined in 3D and then I've got half a bottle of the lid and I now need to secure that underneath the eyelid. I want to push it far back um, so that the eyelid is forward and it just looks more defined. I'm going to secure that. This is going to be quite time consuming and you need lots of masking tape again. Um, so now I've put the eyes in place and I've also filled in the hole at the back of the handle on both sides. Um, so you can see the shape of his head is starting to come together now where you've got the eyebrows and the eye, eyes tucked underneath. I have to say, year six, um, you know, I love art lessons, but it, it's really not the same as having you all in the class with the music on. And the art lessons are a great opportunity to talk to you as well about the day, how you're getting on. Um, so I'm, I'm missing your company, but now we're on to the next step. Um, at the bottom of your bottle, you can draw an oval shape. You're going to cut this oval shape out next, and that's the part where you can pop your hand up and use it like a puppet uh, later on. But this is a very difficult part because in order to cut this oval out now, you need to pierce the bottle. So I suggest you use um, either blue tack or play dough, something soft to go underneath. The, inside the bottle and then um, get a grown-up to help you pierce a hole. Um, I've just used the, the tip of a, of a knife myself um, to pierce a little hole and that way I can poke the scissors in and begin to cut the oval out. But I really do insist that you ask a grown-up to help you with this bit because it is quite tricky. Once you've got the little hole in place and you want to cut the oval out in one whole piece as well, because you're going to move it forward on your shape. And this is going to become the jaw, the bottom part of the Tyrannosaurus's mouth. And doing his mouth is going to be interesting. Do you know, Tyrannosaurus Rex, he had about between 50 and 60 teeth, and each one as big as a banana, but much, much sharper. Do you imagine if he decided to come and take a chomp on you. I think he'd make light work of any human being, wouldn't he? So I'm going to continue to cut out that oval. Okay, so hopefully you've cut out the oval shape now and you'll notice that your jaw, your bottom jaw is still sort of flailing around loosely. So you want to um, bring that together now. Other tape or masking tape, these two pieces together. I um, wonder how many of you are using duct tape. I remember doing arts and crafts um, activities at home and braiding my dad's duct tape as well. Or I mean, masking tape we tend to have for marking out areas if we're doing some decorating and painting the walls. You want to protect the skirting boards, those kind of things. Um, 
So there you go, I've joined the mouth together and now I need to attach the oval bit. Now you'll see it won't completely fit this hole, but you can make up with the gap by extra masking tape. I love masking tape, don't I? Or um, actually you could even do paper mache if some of you are good at that and you've got some old newspapers lying around. Remember you're thinking about what materials you can use, how you can make your design unique what's going to work best for you, what you can find around your home. You're going to be, you are the artist, the creator. So it's down to you to select your materials. So I'm starting to attach this oval now. Um, another fact for you, there have been more than 20 complete Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons found um, in the USA. The last one to be found was in 1997 and um, they, named, they named the skeleton Sue. Apparently it was the best condition that they'd ever dug up. Now get this, the value of Sue, five million pounds. Can you imagine? I think I might start digging up my dad's garden and see if I can find a T-Rex. Okay, so all I've done now is moved the oval forward and stuck it into place. Um, you can see his jaw is a little bit oh, wonky. Um, looks a bit like he's chewing, I suppose, doesn't it? Again, it's just part of his character. Um, not sure if I want to adjust him yet or, or plough on. Um, but I'm thinking all the time how to improve my design. Now, the next thing is at the moment, his mouth is pretty straight, but we're going to uh, make it slightly different. We're going to cut a little bit of a higher... Um, part of the gum here just so that he can bar more teeth so when he's barring his teeth later on so let me just explain and model so um, we're quite happy with the slit all the way to say about here and then I'm going to just come in to the slit that's already existing and just cut out a little bit higher up on both sides and this will just um his gum line only as far back as the hinge there's also sort of another purpose for this really the bit that we're cutting out now we're actually going to use to make his teeth um because obviously a ferocious tyrannosaurus rex uh, needs to have his teeth want to make it even make sure both sides that i'm beginning that higher bite at the same point out of that. There we go. Now I've got two extra strips of plastic from the same bottle that I can now start to make some teeth. So with the bits of plastic that I've cut off, I'm now just snipping it really carefully to make pointed teeth. So there's tooth that way. There's a tooth that way. And I'm kind of cutting I suppose it's just a zigzag, isn't it? To make lots and lots of sharp teeth because don't forget we just learned that Tyrannosaurus rex, you had between 50 and 60 teeth. Um, so here I've got a strip of masking tape with the sticky side facing me in here and cut out my teeth. So I'm sticking the teeth carefully along the masking tape and as close together as possible because I want to fit as many teeth on as possible obviously with him having so many and here now you can see that on the back I've still got a nice sticky strip ready for me to put inside the jaw so if I get my head over here then I can carefully now insert my teeth pressing them down inside the jaw bringing them around lower here so that it's got teeth at the front as well. I really like my dinosaur now. I think he's starting to take shape and can see his character. Looks like he's got a bit of a broken tooth there. Maybe that was bitten off more than he could chew. Okay, so I'm going to do the second side, sec second set of teeth now. So rip masking tape off again. I've Use the other strip of plastic to make more teeth and I'm just sticking them along the masking tape again to make my second row 
of teeth. Now, what I did do is leave quite a big bit of the plastic because I'm going to make some extra large canine teeth. I don't think you've really got any of you. At my one's going to have some. They can see different sized teeth. Um, what different types of teeth can you remember from? I think it's year three science when we learn about molars at the back, which we use for chewing. Canines are used for ripping and tearing the flesh um, off our prey. So all carnivorous animals will have canines. Um, and what other incisors? What types of animals have incisors? Okay, so <laughs> he has got a bit of a wonky jaw, my one. I like to think that he's chewing on his prey. But I've added the, the front row of teeth now. And as I mentioned before, I've got some bigger canines going on. But I, it's a little bit untidy because you can see masking tape in the middle. So just to neaten it up a little bit, I'm going to take my scissors um, and cut out the scruffy bits of masking tape that you can see. The reason for that as well is in a moment, I'm going to begin um, adding some color. Now, again, it's down to you to choose your materials. You might choose to paint your T-Rex, or you may choose that you want to do paper mache and make them even more, you know, add more texture so that you can paint over paper mache instead. You may choose to add some clay to create features. Um, or you may want to use um, crepe paper and with PVA glue, that's great for adding on. So you can try different effects now to add your colour. So I was just neatening him up a bit. The, the next step really is to cover him completely in the masking tape because you'll find if you are going to paint, the paint is not going to stick to the plastic unless you add perhaps a little bit of glue to the paint. Um, but alternatively, if we cover it all in masking tape now, then again, it's adding to that re re um, reptilian sort of scaly skin and adding, creating texture. Um, it'll just look more effective. So I'm going to cover it in masking tape now and then show you about mixing your colours or adding other materials to make, to make it more colourful. I've got to sort out this jaw. Okay, so I've completely covered my model, my sculpture now in masking tape. So the last thing that's left to do is to add some colour and I can either paint him, as I said, or um, if you've got crepe paper, you can add that to um, brighten him up as well. Now, if you have got paints, you know, you really only need the primary colours, um, blue, yellow, and you can make all, all different colours. Um, blue and yellow make, will make the green. And if you add white, you can create different shades. So you can get it lighter or darker um, as well. So you can play around with your paints. If you haven't got a palette at home, then um, the top tip would be to use a kitchen, kitchen plate, something that you eat your dinner off. But if you put a layer of cling film on it, then that way you're not going to stain mom's best plates um, and you can mix the colours and then just take the cling film off after it and throw it away. So you can experiment with creating different colours from the primary colours that you have available. Um, now I've got this from the laundry, you'll recognise one of these on top of um, your washing liquid and I've got some crepe paper so I'm going to rip off little bits, different shades of green. I'm going to just try this effect, you know I am being resourceful. Um, why else would I use a washing liquid lid? I'm thinking about the things that I have available around me that you might have available. And I'm going to build up the next um, layer with different shades of green. I'm going to also have a go at painting one um, to show you, because I know that you'll have different resources and materials available. And I've even found in an arts and crafts box some um, feathers. Now, scientists believe that actually a lot of dinosaurs might have had feathers and that birds eventually evolved from them. We've been, of course, learning about evolution. So you might even want, if you've got these, to add a, a couple of feathers to yours. I don't I don't know. Um, I'm being creative and I want him to be unique. Now, um, that's the that's the video for today, really. That's the how to do it, how to do your sculpture. 
Um, I will put up some pictures to show you how this turned out after I've painted it and added my colour um, as well. Just want to say, children, I hope you have as much fun creating your sculpture as I've had today. Um, you know, it's fantastic, actually, what you can make from a plastic bottle. Just having a bit of patience and, of course, thinking about how we join things together. We're practising all of our skills that we've learnt in our whole primary school career. Um, so just have fun. I look forward to seeing all of your work.